What's up guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today, and we're going to talk about a turtle, all right, an aquatic turtle. Uh, awesome, awesome species, however, there's going to be a little ugliness involved in this one today, okay, um, just because of, uh, of the pet trade. But these are really cool turtles. Before we do that, right here, right in this corner, is going to be the subscribe button. Make sure to hit that. And if you've already done that, we appreciate you doing so. And we appreciate you following along week after week after week. Now let's get started into this. This is the beautiful red-eared slider turtle. They're native to Southeast Asia, one of the largest pond turtle species on the planet. They get the size of dinner plates when they're full grown. Big females, monster, monster turtles. And as you can see, even a little bit irritable. These guys are probably the number one, uh, number one turtle sold in the pet trade most of the time at dung hole places like uh, little crap shops in Myrtle Beach and places like that. Um, a little cesspool shops is all they are. Uh, they sell these little guys as cute little green babies. And in the meantime, you're going to see this picture right here um, of a whole bunch of cute little green babies that everybody sees at your little shops or uh, even ordering them offline from, uh, uh, from places uh, that uh, will sell the baby turtles. But the problem is is most of the time people don't do their research into, into how big these guys get. Uh, while they are a very, very popular pond species or a popular aquatic turtle for people to keep in captivity, as long as you're prepared for what you're looking for, they do make a great, uh, great enjoyable viewing, all right, viewing only pet. No, these guys do not like to be handled. Uh, yes, they will take to hand feeding in the water and things like that, uh, but they have the telltale red stripe right over the top of their ear it's not actually a red ear this their eardrum is not red um, it's a stripe that goes right uh right alongside the uh the red ear uh, the red eared sliders red stripe on the head okay now every one of the patterns on the bottom of the shell is going to be a little bit different from the other that's one way you can actually distinguish a lot of your little red ears uh red ear slider uh, if you get multiple species or uh, multiple individuals you can tell the difference in the red ears one from another matter of fact you can see the red right there on the side of the head sometimes they'll even have a little bit of red right on the top stripe on top of their head now with these guys in captivity we have so many people turn these things over from all over the United States every year we probably get 15,000 plus red-eared sliders alone a year and sometimes you can tell when it's an individual that really don't want to give up their animal. Maybe they're moving into an apartment. And a lot of that's happening a lot right now because of the economy. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, current and future political leaders are doing a really piss poor job of running the country. But that's neither here nor there. But with the economy the way that it is, and with things that are happening, uh, people losing jobs or jo you know people take, being taken from one state to another state for a job. A lot of apartment complexes where and townhome complexes where people move into don't allow them to have animals like these. So they end up having to give them over. Those kind of situations we can get. We'll have people come into the zoo a lot and be like, man, I just didn't realize how big this would get. And the first thing I ask them is, don't you have a phone? Yeah, do you have internet on that phone? Well, I guess you got no excuses for looking up and taking a five-minute research and doing five minutes of research to see exactly how big these things are actually going to get. And usually this is about the size that we start getting them dumped off on our doorstep. And I'm going to be honest, when we started just as a simple little rescue and rehab center, we, just like any other rescue, we get inundated with these animals, and most rescues won't take these things in anymore because especially in the state of North Carolina, it's illegal to sell them to begin with. So a lot of rescues can't even make any money back off the care and the maintenance and everything that they would need just from taking them in. So a lot of people have stopped even taking in red-eared sliders because they're so inundated with red-eared sliders. They become invasive throughout the United States because people are just releasing them. Yes, in this case, they are actually releasing them. In the case of like a lot of the overdramatic nonsense in Florida that use uh, the whole snake being released as, a, as a, the scare tactic, mainly the media, okay? No, there's not, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of an issue when it comes to that. There's a lot of things that, that have caused that, and we're not going to get into those topics right now, but it's not so much people releasing them, okay? Understand that. But like in, in Florida and Georgia and North Carolina and all these other ones, and all these other places, these guys are actually being released, and they're mixing in with uh, other species that they are in, in, inadvertently related to, like the yellow belly slider, uh, which are native to the to these states, the river cooters, the Florida cooters, the red belly sliders. Um, they're mixing in with those. 
And these guys are also taking over certain habitats. So these have become a problem. So a lot of states are actually doing away with even allowing people to possess them, to own them, to purchase them, to sell them, to whatever. And so these little guys are getting a bad rap. Well, what happens is when they're in one of these little dung hole shops like in Myrtle Beach, they're saying, oh, no, they're not going to get any bigger than this. Well, you shouldn't listen to those idiots in those stores anyways, first and foremost. But number two, do your freaking research. You have a phone. You have the Internet. Find out what you're getting. But then they're like, oh, well, we're going to keep them in this little fish bowl. That would be like me stuffing you in a toilet and making you live there all your life, okay? No, they need something huge. And so when people start turning them over, they're like, look, man, this thing's already in a 75-gallon. I'm, I'm seeing it grow, and it's going to have to go to 125-gallon, and I just can't afford that. Okay, fine, we get that in some cases. But again, do your research. If you're going to get these things, do your research, because it's not fair to these animals. It's not fair to these animals that they get dumped on, on doorsteps like us, and we have to figure out what to do with them by the thousands a year because people just don't want to do their research ahead of time to make sure they know what they're getting themselves into. But again, these are awesome, awesome animals. I'm not going to demonize these animals for what humans are doing because it's on the humans, all right? Now, the red-eared slider does eat bugs. They'll eat fish. They'll eat uh, pondweed. They're, they're considered a aquatic omnivorous, okay, so both plant and animal. And, uh, and these guys are absolutely awesome. They'll lay immense loads of eggs. The females can have a huge clutch of eggs. So that's also why they take over so fast is in the springtime when they're actually laying their eggs, one turtle can turn into anything from 20 to 40 turtles. One turtle. And so you can see why they can take over an ecosystem very, very quickly. These guys can be good for an ecosystem. They can help keep things under control, but they can also be bad for an ecosystem that they're not meant to be in because they can take over and actually do uh, take over too much of the food and, uh, and, and population that would be meant for other species of animals. All right. Now, this is the red-eared slider. Really cool turtle. Absolutely awesome. Uh, awesome, awesome turtle, really highly saw, uh, sought after when it comes to the pet trade. Uh, but just understand what these animals turn into if you're going to get one. They're not a bad turtle. They're good little guys. <laughs> Other than the fact so many people think you can just keep them in something so small and they don't do the research to find out exactly how big they're going to get when they're full grown. Okay, now this is the red-eared slider, a Southeast Asian native pond turtle species. I'm Chad. This is the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We are the Reptile Rangers. We appreciate you following along week after week after week. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Again, it's over there in the corner. Make sure to write us in. Let us know what you want to film about. Our information will be in the description below. If you need any medical care advice, people are writing us in off of a lot of our videos and getting medical care advice uh, from us, ecosystem advice, how to set up, what to feed, not to feed. So if you actually need to get in touch with us, go ahead and get with us in the information in the description below. If you want to leave a comment, help yourself. Feel free to. Uh, we enjoy seeing seeing uh, people enjoying the videos and we will either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.